subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening and welcome to sandesh news line i'm lipakshi khurana Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 24th of January. India's active COVID-19 cases highest in 241 days. Schools reopen in Maharashtra state. Pakistan PM Imran Khan warns opposition he'll be more dangerous if ousted. And Taliban delegation begins humanitarian talks in Norway amid protest. And now for all the details, India logged 306,064 new COVID-19 infections on Monday, while the active cases climbed to 2.24 million, the highest in 241 days. Authorities in Western Maharashtra state, however, reopened schools while adhering to protocols as major cities including the state capital Mumbai have been reporting a big decline in infections after hitting peaks. India on Monday registered 306,064 fresh cases of COVID-19, while the active case load climbed to 2.24 million, the highest in 241 days. With a tally of 39.54 million cases, India is the second worst hit country after the United States. Authorities in Western Maharashtra, however, reopened schools on Monday while adhering to COVID-19 protocols, as cases of coronavirus have declined comparatively in the state. The schools were shut earlier this month amid a rapid surge in cases of the new Omicron variant. In the last two weeks, major cities such as Maharashtra's capital Mumbai and India's national capital New Delhi have been reporting big decline in cases after hitting peaks. आज से वापस से स्कूल रीओपनिंग हुआ है इसके लिए हम लोग को बहुत ही खुशी है लेकिन बच्चों का हेल्थ का अभी ख्याल रखा जाएगा सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मास्क और सैनिटाइजर का यूज ये हम लोग सब बच्चों के पास से करके लेने वाले हैं और जिस पेरेंट की परमिशन है वही बच्चों को हम लोग ले रहे हैं क्योंकि अभी तक अगर पेरेंट्स नहीं भेजना चाहते हैं तो कोई भी कंपलसरी नहीं है दिस कम्स एस इंडिया हैज सो फार एडमिनिस्टर्ड ओवर 1.6 बिलियन कोविड 19 वैक्सीनेशन डोजेस इंक्लूडिंग बूस्टर शॉट्स टू इट्स एलिजिबल पॉपुलेशन एज अबाउट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स The tally includes nearly 70% of the eligible population that has got the mandatory two doses. Himalayan towns in India witnessed fresh snowfall on Monday bringing cheers to tourists and covered the hills in a white blanket of snow. The fresh snowfall is expected to intensify the cold wave in the rest of India according to the weather office. India's Naran Shimla city also known as the Queen of Hills witnessed the season's heaviest snowfall on Sunday disrupting daily life. Fresh snowfall was also witnessed on Monday bringing cheers to tourists and covered the hills in a white blanket of snow. According to weather office the fresh snowfall is expected to intensify the cold wave in the rest of India. Following heavy snowfall in Himachal Pradesh state many roads including four national highways have been closed and a number of power supply and water supply schemes disrupted The Regional Meteorological Center in Shimla said the temperature in the city dropped down to minus 1 degree Celsius Itni ummeed nahi thi but yeah it was a really good experience this is the first time that I am witnessing live snowfall I mean this amount As the mercury dropped below zero, Dota town in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory witnessed fresh snowfall, turning the alpine beauty pearly white on Monday morning. A thick layer of snow covered the town amid a chilling winter. Indian capital New Delhi, however, woke up to a blanket of dense fog and gulf on a cold Monday morning, leading to poor visibility. As per weather office Northwest India is expected to witness another cold spell from January 24 onwards owing to several western disturbances that caused heavy rainfall in northern plains and snowfall in the hills South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions such as North America but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and some even die 
And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday warned the opposition parties that he would be more dangerous if they forced him to step down. His remarks came as Opposition Alliance PTM has announced a long march against the government on March 23rd over the issue of soaring inflation. PM Khan said that the move would fail. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday warned his opponents that if he is forced out of office, he would become even more dangerous for them. Khan made the remarks on being cautioned about the planned long march by the multi-party opposition alliance PDM, the Pakistan Democratic Movement, on March 23, over rising inflation in the country. The Prime Minister also slammed Shehbaz Sharif, the leader of the opposition in the National Assembly, and called him a criminal for evading cases of corruption. If I go out of the government, I will not be more dangerous for you. Until now, I am sitting in the office and watching the streets. If I go out of the streets, I will not be able to hide in the streets. The Pakistan PM admitted that inflation was the only problem that gave him sleepless nights, but then went on to paint a rosy picture of the economy. With inflation at 12.3%, surging food and energy prices have put Imran Khan under increasing pressure from the middle classes, his main base of support. His government is also facing criticism for presenting a mid-year budget this month to end tax exemptions on a variety of sectors. And moving on, tourism is an important economic activity in illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan. Fishing industry also offers a potential source of income for local residents when the region receives tourists. However, locals say that Pakistan government's apathy to develop road and basic infrastructure has kept the region out of bounds for tourists. Gilgit Baltistan is home to some of the world's highest mountains, including five of the eight thousanders. Carved in the mountain ranges are mesmerizing glacial streams and lakes, rocky mountains, and snow clad peaks that attract tourists to the illegally occupied region. One of the popular occupations in Gilgit Baltistan is fish farming, most notably of freshwater trout, that offers a potential source of income when visited by domestic and international tourists. Locals, however, say that both tourism and fishing industry needed government's attention to prosper. They say Pakistan government's apathy to develop road and other basic infrastructure in the illegally occupied region that could boost the tourism sector has kept Gilgit Baltistan out of bounds for tourists. इस वक्त जो मुश्किलात पेश आ रही हैं जहां तक टूरिस्ट को एक्सेस होनी चाहिए जो खूबसूरत वेलीज हैं जहां पे टूरिस्ट को जाना चाहिए वहां पे रोड एक्सेस नहीं है वहां पे दूसरे जो फैसिलिटीज हैं बिजली का इशू है पानी का इशू है इस तरह से बहुत सारे इशूज हैं खास तौर पर रोड का प्रॉब्लम है जब रोड बनेगी तो वो एरियाज भी प्रमोट हो हुकूमत से जो रिक्वेस्ट करने का मकसद यही है कि ये माली तौर पर इन फिश फार्मिंग के लिए यहाँ पे फार्मर्स को मदद फराहम करें और हुकूमती सरपरस्ती यही है कि इनको तकनीकी मदद फराहम करें माली वसाइल फराहम करें तो ये फलेंगे फूलेंगे और यहाँ रोजगार के मौके पैदा होंगे टूरिज्म बढ़ेगा तो the Prime Minister Imran Khan last year announced special package worth 370 billion rupees for the development of Gilgit Baltistan. Locals say development work has only been on paper, not on the ground. A Taliban delegation began three days of talks in Oslo with Western officials and Afghan civil society representatives on Sunday amid a deteriorating humanitarian situation in Afghanistan. The talks come amid protests that the summit to address humanitarian crisis could be a step towards acknowledging the political legitimacy of the Taliban regime. A Taliban delegation led by acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki on Sunday started three days of talks in Oslo with Western officials and Afghan civil society representatives amid a deteriorating humanitarian situation in Afghanistan. The closed-door discussions are being held at the Soria Moria Hotel on a snowy hilltop outside Oslo. Apart from the humanitarian crisis, the talks are also expected to address economic and social issues including rights of Afghan women under the hardline rule of the Islamic Emirate. We believe on their roles, but every country has their own culture and based on their uh, laws, based on their religious values, uh, no one can deny from their rights. 
absolutely, absolutely Afghan government is trying to provide that type of environment for them, and they will take a part on rebuilding of their country. Meanwhile, scores of Afghans, including a large number of women on Sunday, launched a protest in Oslo, saying that the summit could be a step towards acknowledging the political legitimacy of the Taliban regime. Norwegian Foreign Minister Eniken Hutfeldt had earlier in a statement said that the meetings do not represent a legitimization or recognition of the Taliban. Millions of Afghans have been plunged deeper into poverty since last year's Taliban takeover, which resulted in disruption to aid programs and deteriorating food security. According to a UN report, 95% of Afghans do not have enough food to eat. And in news from Nepal, Nepal has been witnessing another wave of infection since the start of the new year. According to the country's Ministry of Health and Population, the Omicron variant of the coronavirus is now driving daily cases to surge in the Himalayan nation, accounting for 88% of the samples tested recently. The Omicron variant of the coronavirus is now driving daily cases to surge in Nepal. Accounting for 88% of the samples tested recently, the country's Ministry of Health and Population has said. Samir Kumar Adhikari, the ministry spokesman, said at the press briefing on Sunday that during the latest gene sequencing of 32 samples of COVID-19 patients, the Omicron variant was present in 28 samples, while Delta was found in 4 samples. It means the presence of Omicron has been found in 88% of samples, suggesting that it is now the driving force behind recent surge in coronavirus cases like in many other countries in the world, he added. Nepal's active COVID-19 case load climbed to 77,040 on Sunday as 5,598 people tested positive for the infection in the past 24 hours. The nationwide tally has now risen to 910,394, while the death toll reached to 11,655. Former Prime Minister and CPN UML Chairman KP Sharma Oli also tested positive for COVID-19 over the weekend and is currently in the isolation at his residence as the Himalayan nation continues to grapple with an alarming rise in coronavirus cases. The spike in cases comes amid the Nepal government introducing a slew of measures to curb the spread of the virus. The government on Saturday imposed the odd-even road rationing scheme for public and private vehicles in Kathmandu Valley. And moving on, a 24-year-old youth from India's northeastern Manipur who has created a new Guinness World Record by completing 109 push-ups on his fingertips in one minute has credited hard work and dedication for his success. Niranjoy bagged the title after a gap of 13 years, beating Graham Melly of the United Kingdom who won the title in 2009. Twenty four year old Thonao Jam Niranjoy from India's northeastern Manipur, who has created a new Guinness World Record for the most push ups on his fingertips in one minute, has credited hard work and dedication for his success. Niranjoy completed 109 push ups in one minute, breaking the record of 105 push ups that was set by Graham Malley of the United Kingdom in 2009. I basically said two years preparation to Officials of Manipur Sports Authorities said achievements like these will further inspire young athletes in the state. Manipur has produced many national and international sports personalities over the years and it is known as a powerhouse of sports in India. The event was organized by Tech Sports Manipur, an indigenous sport brand supporting the Make in India revolution in the sports goods industry. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button